In the last presentation, we completed analog and discrete time signal. In this lecture, we will study digital signal. In digital signals, we discretize both time and magnitude. We have to discretize both time and magnitude axis. If you remember the discrete time signals, we discretize the time axis but not magnitude. But in case of digital signals, we have to discretize the magnitude axis as well. By discretization, I mean we have to divide the time axis in equal intervals. If delta t is the interval, then we can find out this interval delta t by t1 minus t0 or we can have t2 minus t1 in the same way tn minus tn minus 1. This is how we can find the interval. Now the next thing that we have to do is to discretize the magnitude axis also. This is a very simple example in which we are trying to measure the temperature of a city. Capital T is the temperature and this is in degree Celsius. Small t is the time in seconds and uh, we are measuring the temperature at T1, T2, T3, T4 and T5. If I consider the case of discrete time signals, then let's see what we have. The temperature at time T1 is equal to 9 degrees Celsius. You can clearly see it is equal to 9 degrees Celsius. We have not discretized the magnitude axis. So the temperature can take any value from 0 to 45. Every value is allowed from 0 to 45. So 9 degrees Celsius is absolutely allowed. For T2, for T2 we have 38 degrees Celsius. For T3 we have 24 degrees Celsius. For T4 we have 15 degrees Celsius. And for T5 we have 45 degrees Celsius. And uh, this is for this is for discrete time signal, right? Now we will consider the case of digital signal and we have to discretize this magnitude axis also. So let's do it. I'm going to discretize this and I will have the next level equal to 15 degrees Celsius and another level equal to 30 degrees Celsius. So we have 0, 15, 30, 45 as the allowed values for the temperature capital T. This temperature can take values equal to 0, 15, 3, 0, 30 and 45 only. We divide the magnitude axis into fixed number of levels and the signal can take value equal to these levels only. This line is very important, the most important part that you have to remember in digital signals. The signal can take value equal to these levels only. Right. Now we will consider the same case, the same temperatures for the same time and we have to find out what is the value for temperature capital T at these times. We are considering the digital signal in this case. So let's start. Temperature T at time T1. At T1 we have 9 degrees Celsius but 9 is not allowed, it is between 0 and 15, it is between 0 and 15. Now what we have to take? 0 or 15? The difference between 0 and 9 is 9 degrees Celsius and the difference between 9 and 15 is 6 degrees Celsius. So this 9 degrees Celsius is near to 15 degrees Celsius so at first sight it seems we have to consider 15 degrees Celsius but this is not true. To minimize the error, we have to take the lower value. We have to take 0 degrees Celsius. This is the key point that you should remember. We don't select the higher value, we select the lower value. So the temperature T at time T1 is equal to 0 degrees Celsius. And the temperature T at time T2 is 38, but 38 is also not allowed. It is between 3030 and 45. We again have to take 3030 because this is the lower level. So at T2 we have 30 degrees Celsius. Temperature T at T3 is equal to, at T3 we have 24. 24 is near to 30 but again we have to consider the lower level. So 15 degrees Celsius is the answer. At T4 we have 15. 15 is definitely allowed so we have 15 degrees Celsius. At T5 we have 45 and 45 is allowed so 45 degrees Celsius and this is the values in case of 
digital signal. So you can clearly see the difference between discrete time signals and digital signals. We can have any value of the temperature within 0 to 45 but in this case we have the value for temperature equal to this levels only. Now we will see one more example in which we will consider the voltage this is the time axis capital V is the voltage we are considering the digital signal and uh, we have 0 volts and 5 volts as the two values that are allowed let's say at any time T1 the voltage is equal to 2 volts then voltage at T1 is equal to 0 volts because I have already explained you we have to consider the lower value so I have taken 0 volts now you can see we have error of 2 volts because the observed voltage was 2 volts but we are getting 0 volts so how to overcome this error we can overcome this error by increasing the number of levels if we increase the number of levels error will reduce this is very very important point very very important point on increasing the number of levels error will reduce let's see how I'm going to divide 0 to 5 in 4 equal parts so I will have 1.25 as the next level 2.5 and 3.75 okay these are the levels so we now have 0 1.25 2.5 3.75 and 5 as the allowed values for this voltage V so voltage at time T1 is equal to is equal to 1.25 volts because we have to consider the lower value and 2 volt is between 1.25 and 2.5 now we can easily take 1.25 instead of 0 so the error is reduced and now we have error of 0 0.75 volts only earlier the error was 2 volts but now the error is 0 0.75 if we increase the number of levels more for example if I have levels equal to 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 then this 2 volt can clearly be measured as 2 volts so voltage at T1 in this case is equal to 2 volts and error of 0 volts is there so we have reduced the error of 2 volts to 0 volts by increasing the number of levels this is all for this presentation but there is one question if we were already having analog and discrete time signals then what is the need of digital signal what is the need of digital signal this is the question and in the next lecture we will discuss this need of digital signal if you know the answer of this question go ahead and post your answer in the comment section this is all for this presentation see you in the next one